Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this army pacing Horus Heresy video, we're going to be tackling the 19th Legion, the Raven Guard. So we know we want them all sort of sneaky beaky, but I want to make sure there's a little bit of interest in the black armor as well, but always bearing in mind that we want a good sized army in a reasonable time frame. Now let's paint. Over our primer, we're going to base coat the model black. Now even if you've used a black primer, we're going to work up from a black paint so that if we have to go back and do any touch-ups, we can get the same colour, the same finish and all the rest of it. I'm using my favourite black paint here, which is Vallejo Model Colour Black. I've thinned it about two drops of thinner to paint and I'm firing it through at 25 psi in a Harder and Steamek Evolution Cult of Paint Signature Series 0.4mm needle and nozzle. Now when we look at that black once it's on the miniature, under the lamps, we can almost see where our highlights need to be, and it's just a case of colouring these in. So we're picking our mid-tone here, so our grey, and I've used Corvus Black by Gaines Workshop. Only recently got to play with this colour. I think it's been out for ages, but I just wasn't aware of it. Uh, it airbrushes very, very nicely. Uh, it's a good name for the, uh, the paint as well, considering what it is we're painting, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I will often try a paint because of that, uh, and very often works out pretty nice. So I'm going to leave real time how I'm doing the black armour here because it is something we get quite a lot of questions about, even though we've done a lot of different recipes for it over the last couple of years, both here on YouTube and over on Patreon. But I think a marine's a really good way of illustrating the highlights that we're looking to fill in or paint in. So we're holding it under that painting lamp and we can see them running down the different shapes there are on the model. And you'll notice that the highlight follows the shape that it's on. So if it's a vertical cylinder, then it's a vertical highlight line. If it's a shoulder pad, then it's more of a sphere at the top. And I'm looking to cover probably 30 to 40% of the surface area, something like that. If we need to touch it up later, it's not a problem. Now for our highlight, I've just added a drop of white into the mix. Uh, if I had to give you a ratio, it's gonna be something like four drops of Corvus Black to one drop of white. I'm using Vallejo model color white, but you need to find out what's your sort of preferred color. And we can see actually, once we've dropped the white in there, we can see what color there is in that Corvus Black. And you can see it's this nice sort of turquoise uh, color. And here I'm following around exactly those same highlights, but we're going much, much tighter. So I mean covering a much smaller area. Now this can be a little bit tricky uh, the first few times you do it, when you're sort of beginning to understand the, the size of the areas you want to highlight uh, and also that airbrush control. So thin it down and use a pressure that you're comfortable with and allows you to paint how you want to paint. So for me, about 25 PSI here uh, and I've thinned that mixture. So I thinned it 50-50 when I was just using the Corvus Black. When I added in the white, I added another drop of thinner in. So we're looking at about two drops of thinner to paint maybe a touch more. So here he is, where I think I'm happy with it. I've drawn attention to the face there. We can see all the shapes on the model. It's got that nice sort of blue tint to it, kind of raveny. Now I think that highlight on the rear of his left leg there is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna go back to the model now with very, very thin down model color black. You can see how thin it is there. I just sprayed it on his leg. And we're just going to glaze that over just once. So one layer of very, very thin paint. Just let it dry and see how much it changes the colour. I'm going to go on his face there and just make sure that the sides are nice and black. So if I had a little bit of overspray, this is where I can tidy it up. And because we're not going to be putting any more colour on this model, you can afford to take that little bit of extra time on really getting it looking exactly how you want. And I think one of the biggest challenges with painting black armor, particularly on a 28 mil or ish scale uh, miniature, is not making it look gray or, you know, very dark blue or very dark green, whatever. It's just a case of playing around with those three colors, the black, the mid-tone and the highlight. So I'm happy with him and now I want to prepare him for the next stages. So I'm going to hit the model with a gloss varnish. I'm using Vallejo polyurethane gloss here, 
you use whatever gloss you like, rattle can, airbrush, doesn't matter. We just want him looking nice and shiny. This isn't going to be the final finish of the model, so don't worry. We're just getting it good and glossy so we can give it a pin wash. Now there's a lovely bit of artwork in the Lieber Astartes, which is the sort of good guy army book for the Heresy series. And the Raven Guard artwork in there, they, they've worked a load of red into the shadows and also sort of the dirt uh, in the panel lines. And I think it's a brilliant way of adding a bit of interest to the model. So I want to make up a nice dark brown red. Now, I usually would use, say, Burnt Umber, uh, but I've run out of that. Uh, so I'm mixing up my own version here uh, using dark brick red and a dark brown, so sepia. But you get the idea, a dark red brown. And then I'm going to just pin wash that around the model. And if you're not sure what I mean by that, I'll pop a link up in the top here, which takes you through it in a video just dedicated to panel lining and pin washing. But it's a lot of fun working with these oils. I just want to take a minute just to thank all of you that are supporting us at the moment, both here on YouTube with your subscriptions, but also over on Patreon. It's allowing us to create multiple videos a week covering everything from army painting to competition painting to sculpting. So if you're interested in any of that or just supporting our work, consider checking it out. And thanks to all of you that do. Now you can see I'm being pretty liberal here with the wash. If it goes on too thick, I'm just going to dip my brush in some thinner and I like odorless mineral spirits, uh, Sansador by Windsor and Newton. And I just sort of thin it down on the model. And those mineral spirits are what you saw me diluting the oil with to create the wash. You'll notice I've also done the decals at this stage because the model's glossy and I have to leave it overnight. Again, I'll link up of how to get good results from your transfers. So once it's all dry, I want to give the armor its final finish. And because we're sort of sneaky, stealthy, that kind of vibe, I think a super, super or ultra matte finish is really going to work well for these guys. It's a very powerful varnish, so give it one spray, let it dry, see if you need another. But I'm really pleased with how that's come out. Now for the metals, again, I wanted to get a little bit of color into the model here. So I've used a color called Exhaust Manifold. It's just a nice sort of dark silver color. It's a little bit of brown in it. I think it complements the colors already on the model very nicely. Now we're going to do a bit more sort of damage. So here I've got a very similar color to the oil wash that we put on, so a dark red brown. In this case it's called Dark Rust by Vallejo Model uh, Panzer Aces, Model Color Panzer Aces series. And all I'm doing is going around the areas of the model uh, on his armor that would get a load of damage. So the sort of edges and particularly down near his feet, his shoulder pads, uh, I also was a bit naughty with his decal there and didn't wait for the microsole to dry properly. So I've got a little bit of uh, frost in there underneath, which is something we can fix with uh, a little bit of battle damage like this. If it was a character model, I'd redo it, but just a line trooper, just whack a bit of damage on there. And the last bit of damage, I've got uh, a light silver here. This is Lead Belcher by Games Workshop. I'm just going to tap that along some of the edges as well, just to represent sort of fresh chipping that's happened on the armor. It's a really, really nice way of getting effective looking battle damage on a black model. I probably use a lot more silver on a black model than I would uh, on, say, a you know, a, a Death Guard model or a White Scar or something like that, where actually a lighter colour would work just as well. Now for the eye lenses. Uh, first off, if you look at my finger, I tried Cantor Blue and it exploded all over me. Uh, but I didn't like the colour anyway. So we're base coating it using Inky by Darkness by Games Workshop. And then I'm going to use Sotek Green also by Games Workshop. And I'm going to paint along the bottom of the eye of the lens. Painting a slightly smaller area each time. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of white in to that Sotek. And I'll try and do the thinnest line I can along the bottom of the lens. Get that nice sort of cold blue. I think works really well for these. And then with just pure white, I'm going to put a little dot up in the corner where it's darkest. Just gives that idea of a bit of a reflective uh, lens. So I think we've already got him looking 
pretty interesting, uh, if I'm honest, which is really nice. I was a little bit worried, and I realised at this point I'd forgotten to do that little white, um, whatever you call it, emblem on his shoulder. So I've just used a grey. This is Mechanica standard grey, whatever grey you've got that is nice coverage. Uh, and then I'm going to use an off-white, in this case Games Workshop Ulthwang grey. The reason I'm using slightly off-white is that if I wanted to, I could then use white to do some chipping along the edges. As it was, I just used a bit more of that dark rust colour. And the final step I'm going to do now is the last bit of weathering, where I've taken just the sepia oil on its own, so the dark brown oil, and I'm creating a wash with it, which I'm going to wash over the metal areas, and I'm also going to use it neat to create a few little streaks just over where we've got like the white decal and stuff. You're not really going to see those streaks if we just do it on one of the black panels, but an area where we might have a bit of white on there, it's a good opportunity to put that. So when someone glances at that model, they go, oh, it's got battle damage and streaks and all the rest of it, even though you may have only painted one or two on there. But all these extra colours is just bringing what could potentially be quite a boring model, I think, to life. The main thing I'm most happy with, with this uh, tutorial, is how the blacks come out. I think it's interesting, I think it still reads as black, but most importantly, in my mind, it fits my vision of what the Raven Guard would look like. How are they different to Iron Hands who also have black armor? How are they different to Dark Angels who also have black armor? Um, it's not just how the models look. You know, we can tell an awful lot of the story with the the finish of that armor uh, and the colors that we choose to highlight and shade it with. For the base, I've just used a couple of pigments like we do on our normal bases. Uh, I'll pop them down in the description as well. So we're nearing the end now of the uh, the Legion color schemes or recipes for uh, our Horus Heresy. Uh, playlist. Uh, just a couple more to go now and they'll all be out within the next week or so uh, and I hope you've all really enjoyed uh, this time of recording. I think everybody who wants it will have received their new Horus Heresy 2nd edition Age of Darkness box. Um, I cannot wait to see what you're all going to come up with. Uh, it's very very exciting times and if you do give these Raven Guard a go please tag us in the social media. I'd love to see this scheme replicated across an army. Now if you've got any questions pop them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're not already, and hit that little bell to make sure you're notified whenever a new video pops up. And I'll see you next time.